Okay, now we're going to talk about how we can minimize our reactive attention, which is just a fancy way of saying let's not be multitasking and let's not be distracted. It always starts with mindset. So if we want to win the day, if we want to strive for extreme productivity, we need to think about single tasking, not multitasking, working without distractions. Now, it's sort of interesting, the biology of distractions. Our biology is working against us. Focused attention versus reactive attention. You know, the focused attention is the good stuff when we're working on one thing at a time. But our reactive attention, we're constantly scanning our environment and looking for changes. You know, that's a survival mechanism. Back in the caveman days, if all of a sudden we saw something out of the corner of our eyes or we heard a sound, hey, is that a saber-toothed tiger? You know, run or fight, right? We need to pay attention to those things. It's no different today, walking down the street, you know, tapping out a text message, step off the sidewalk, almost get hit by a bus and you hear, hear the horn. Ooh, all of a sudden our reactive attention brings danger into awareness and we step back. That's what reactive attention is for, a survival mechanism. Brain chemistry, though, also unfortunately drives us to distraction. It's primarily because of the chemical dopamine. Now, dopamine has been called the happy chemical, the happy drug, my favorite brain candy, um, and it is triggered. Dopamine is triggered and reinforces the pleasurable feeling we get from things that, evolutionarily speaking, are good for us. You know, I'm going to eat a big fatty meal, I'm going to fatten up for the winter, dopamine's kicking in, yeah, you like that big fatty meal, eat all you want, that's why it's hard to control that kind of stuff. Hey, having sex, it's good for making babies, and if you're doing it right, it's kind of fun, right? So dopamine's reinforcing all of that kind of stuff. Gambling, evolutionary-wise, I don't know, but it's good to win money. It feels fun to pull that slot arm back and all of a sudden hear that chinking going on. Dopamine is kicking in. Crystal meth, cocaine, sends surges of dopamine into our brain. It is good stuff. Dopamine is good stuff, not crystal meth or coke. Dopamine is the good stuff. So, what are we doing about this? The crazy thing is, the way dopamine is released from food, sex, gambling, it's also released by checking our email inbox and from social media. And, and it's accentuated because dopamine is most effective when it's not a steady, a steady high or a steady state. You know, part of what makes gambling so pleasurable is that you pull that slot arm back and nothing happens. Eh, got nothing. Try it again. Eh, got nothing. Try it again. Ching, 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 three cherries. I win. It's that anticipation. So social media and email, it's like, hey, let me check that. Let me check Facebook. Eh, boring. Check, check, scroll down some more. Boring, boring. Hey, a funny cat video. Ding, ding, ding. Dopamine is released. Email is work but it works the same way. Oh, I've got something boring to do. I've got something hard to do. Let me check email. Boring email, stupid email. Oh, Janice uh, has a quick question for me that I can answer. I answer it. I feel good connecting with Janice. I feel good helping them. I feel productive even though I'm ignoring that thing over there. Dopamine is the chemical that's reinforcing all of this stuff. Not only is our biology working against us, the world is working against us. The environment is working against us. Everyone's trying to steal money from your pocket, and they can't do it unless they have your attention. Now, we know this. You know, walking down the street anywhere, everyone's fighting for attention. That billboard wants to, me to look up at it. You know, little sponsorships, ads, signs, uh, sale signs in the, in the coffee shop. We're used to all of those ads, ads on TV, ads on the radio. They want our attention so they can sell us stuff, so they can take money out of our wallet. Now, the crazy thing is, we just put a giant money-stealing, attention-grabbing device into all of our pockets in recent years with the smartphone. So what do I mean by that? Well, think about all those apps, all those free apps that you download, the games and things that keep reminding you, hey, you haven't fed your pig or some army's invading your village, you better hurry up and get back into the game. Or Facebook, bing, you know, someone's connected, someone sent you a message. Twitter, they all do it, they're all fighting for your attention. 
because that's how they make money. And this is kind of a strange thing to think about, but you know, the reason why there's no customer support number for Facebook and you can't just call up Farmville and ask them a question is because you are not the customer. You are the product. And that's a big distinction. Anything that you get for free in life, it's free because you're the product and someone else is the customer. That customer is buying access to you. So apps, social media, everybody is trying to interrupt you and say, look at me, look at me. Hey, come back, stop doing what you're doing. Come back to us, because once we have your attention, we're making money. Our biology's working against us, our environment is working against us. So what can we do? The first is we can finesse our biology. The prefrontal cortex, you know, this part of our brain is the one that, that helps us to focus, it helps with concentration, and it helps with willpower, saying no to all these distractions. We feed that with glucose, blood sugar. That's why it's bad to skip meals. That's why when you wake up and you get into your day, you tend to have full storage of glucose, all of your mental strength. It depletes throughout the day. It gets weaker throughout the day. We need to replenish that. Exercise, we've talked about in other lessons, 20 minutes of light exercise, walking, jogging, yoga, all have shown that it increases the prefrontal cortex, the ability to stay focused and to concentrate. And finally, recharging frequent breaks will combat that steady decline of glucose and willpower. We can also control our environment, and this is the big one. So you want to finesse your biology, you want to fight back against those environmental interruptions. Notifications on your phone, shut them off. Apps, you know, Facebook, social media, email notifications, everything gets shut off. You want to, if you're working at your desktop, you want to keep your email windows closed while you're working. Declutter your work area, declutter. You don't want to be working at a desk on an important document with you know, People Magazine sitting there. It's just so easy to take a look to see what George Clooney's doing this month. You don't want to be doing that. And then finally, tell others that you're in the zone. Other people are gonna interrupt you all the time. Whether it's <laughs> telling little Johnny, hey, when daddy's door is closed, you can't interrupt. You gotta, you gotta go ask mommy or something like that. You, you can't, you've gotta send these signals to everybody around you that you aren't to be disturbed when you're in the work zone. Whoops. Now, so that's kind of the knowledge of concentration is key, but our biology and the environment is working against us. How do we try to make this a habit, make this a routine? And the first is when it comes to those notifications, make it a lifestyle choice. Shut off all those notifications all the time. It's not like, oh, I'm getting ready to work on this document. I will now go shut off Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and all the rest. Just leave it off. You, don't, you can schedule time or use your leisure time to check into those things. You don't ever really need them interrupting you. The second one is to use access blockers. Now this was interesting. So I interviewed over 200 ultra productive people, the billionaires, the millionaires, the entrepreneurs, Olympic athletes. One of my favorite groups to talk to, straight A students. So college students, you know, Harvard, Princeton, MIT, and a lot of high school students. The thing they talked about more than any other group was the lure of social media, you know, social media as a distraction. The straight A students talked about like crazy using apps that they download on their iPhones or smartphones or iPads or as a browser extension if they're using a desktop computer. These apps block access to all of you know, these social media sites. Now you've, you can control them. I want to be blocked for 20 minutes. I want to be blocked for an hour. I want to be blocked for a day. Um, shut off Facebook and CNN.com, but leave email open. Some will eliminate all access to the internet. There's many, many of these access blocking apps out there. The ones that were most frequently mentioned to me, one called Antisocial, another called Stay Focused, Self-Control, and Freedom. So I don't use these myself. I just kind of shut my phone off and close the windows and I configure any new app to say no notifications. 
But if you really are struggling with this, if you really have a problem, then this is a great way you just sort of run one of these apps when you go into a work zone, work sprint, and then you have, you have no choice. You will not get access to it until that time expires. Finally, habit tip number three, just use visual notifications to tell those around you that you're working in the zone, you're not to be interrupted. Um, these can work uh, at, at, you know, at your own home office, but they're especially effective if you're working in a corporate environment where lots of people are used to hitting with that got a minute meetings. Uh, you can use these flags, you can make one, you can buy them online. Please do not disturb, you just sort of put the flag up on your, your laptop screen or even on the cube wall. You could, could of course just you know, kind of swipe one of those hotel do not disturb signs and hang it outside your door if you have an office door. Print a little poster, deadline uh, looming, do not disturb. And this is crazy, but you can actually buy, it's kind of like caution tape. If you've got a cubicle, you just buy, I think it's a few dollars, this please do not disturb tape, where <laughs> you can just stretch it across, stick it on there, and anyone that walks up to your cube sees, oops, Kevin's in the zone, I better be quiet. And then if I'm you know, ready to play or hang out or want to help people, I just release it and it, and it re retracts in. It's a pretty cool system. So just have some sort of visual reminder to tell people, hey, you know, we're in an open office environment because it's cool and trendy, but I'm in the zone, so don't bother me. Don't tap me on the shoulder. Don't ask me a question right now. When it comes to concentrating, we want no distractions. As I like to say, if you're going to win the day, you start by winning the hour. And you win the hour by saying, I'm going to get this thing done and I'm not going to pay attention to all those other things, even if the dopamine wants me to. See you in the next lesson.